how you doing? I'm Danny DeHeck and uh, I've just spent uh, all night getting all my jobs done. They tell me that the night that you're most productive is the night that you go away for a holiday. And Christchurch uh, is where I live in New Zealand and uh, our Prime Minister has said that we've got 48 hours to basically pack up our stuff and all work from home. So obviously with the coronavirus... Um, I thought, oh, right, it's uh, preparing for that. Now, that's a really hard thing to do, isn't it? So, yeah, so what I thought I'd do is I'd run things as normal, like I did last Monday, and try to run our meetings Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, because I own a business networking company. And then by Thursday, it was pretty obvious that things were falling apart and the wheels were starting to come in off the cart. So I started organising a place to work and I set up a recording studio and then um, I thought we'd make it a Zoom room and then I thought we'd have wise people coming in and offering a lot of advice to people who are freaking out a little bit about how to keep their businesses going. Um, I've got a real cool place I'm working out of at the moment called uh, Genius Coworking and uh, my two best mates, Jerry and um, Clinton, and we all got the same mindset that we want to build communities and we believe that communities are the most important thing. So we're all trying to keep it together and tomorrow morning at 7.30 I've sent out about 4,500 emails to contacts and people I've known for many years and uh, I've been building up this business uh, of helping people build relationships for probably eight years now. And um, I'm hoping that a few people will get their head around the technology and start um, using Zoom and coming into our room and chatting and telling people their concerns and um, the, about their businesses uh, because that's what I've been working on for eight years. But the reality is that I reckon we'll be lucky to get about 20 people, which would be a good number. And the reality is that I actually will be starting over again because I've thought after this I'm probably not really keen to go back to running my meetings and cafes and bars and I probably want to take my business online because I've done a lot of uh, practicing lately. I've been building a podcast for tohick.com and also uh, Elite Six, um, and if you don't know what Elite Six is, it's a business networking company, have a format that, um, that's an hour long, and I get people together, and the reason why we're called Elite Six is because we break people into groups of six, and each person gets to talk for five minutes each, and it's a great way of um, getting to know people, and each week we shuffle those people around. So now I'm going to be doing that virtually. So I also run quite a few online shops and so I've just refunded probably about 10 or 15 orders that have got lost in transit because the online shops I run they ship from AliExpress and I've been sitting in the corner of this building which is the wood mill building which is a four-story building and we're on the second floor I've been the only one in the office all day long there's been gale force winds and you'd swear that you're on the front of a ship <laughs> and you're and you're weathering a storm. So, um, and I'm absolutely freezing. And I were going to sleep on the sofa, and I'm looking around now, and I'm thinking, now, there's a sheepskin rug there I could wrap her up myself up in. There's a whole lot of pillows which I could make the couch more desirable to lay on. Um, I haven't eaten either very much, so I did bring in some gluten free work picks and some, uh, I've gone vegan lately. So I've also brought in. Um, what do they call that stuff? Coconut milk and some brown raw sugar because that's the uh, ingredients to stay alive when you're hungry. Yeah, but um, so then I thought I'd touch up to heck.com's website and make sure I've got all the buttons in place. And then I thought oh, I'd better do Elite Sixes as well. So I've got, if you went to elite6.co.nz, you'll see I've got live stream, I've got a Zoom room button and a virtual membership. And so what I'm into now is I'd like people to purchase a virtual membership. I don't know if you can hear me shivering, but I'm pretty cold. And the idea of that is if you want to 
um, participate in the Zoom meetings and be in the video, you can, but you need to be a, a member of Elite Six to do that. Or if you just like some good old-fashioned advice and you'd like to be a spectator, that's what we've got the live stream for, which is broadcast onto uh, uh, YouTube. And then we're going to do Watch the Party. So we're going to put our, our YouTube feed into a link in Facebook called Watch the Party, and that will um, notify all our friends that something's going on to watch. So all that technology might sound easy-peasy. I've got a couple of screens set up here so that people that were actually in the same room as me um, can come along and participate. And also I've got my fantastic recording gear. But the reality is that no one's probably going to turn up. I'm probably going to sleep in because I'm exhausted. And, um, and I'm hoping to be a true leader. And that's something, you know, I've, a lot of people, I'm a facilitator and I'm a connector, so I... I've got lots of really cool people around me, so hopefully they'll be in, in there having a chat tomorrow. So we'll be doing a live broadcast um, from 7.30 in the morning right through to um, 10.30, or until everyone drops off, really. So it's quite exciting. But I can say with my hand on my heart <laughs> that I have never had my websites looking so good. I've never had the ducks in a row in my business so good. A few months ago, I had something like 800 transactions to reconcile in my zero, and um, uh, basically every month. And I, I, I wanted to get my head around doing my own bookkeeping because I've had uh, a bookkeeper that was in the dark ages using pen and paper for 20 years, and then I went digital. And then apparently I was too complicated for her, so she, she didn't like me anymore and left. <laughs> so then I said, well, stuff this. I'm not going to have a bookkeeper get stuck into me about my business. So I went and got some lessons from an accountant and got my head around um, zero. And now I do my own. So when I do employ somebody um, to look after it again, um, I'll at least know if they're doing the job right and the way I want. So that's great. So anyway, I got rid of that problem. Um, we used to, we've got online shops and we'll sell anything up to 500 or 1,000 products uh, a month and that's uh, a transaction nightmare so I've installed new software in there so when people go to the chat window they can ask a question and as long as it's in our knowledge base it will automatically throw them is this the answer you're looking for and it's cut down our inquiry so I've been so busy um, I haven't had a chance to process orders it's, I'm seven days behind so I caught up with that tonight I also went into our new real-time answering system that um, takes away our email hassles and um, and answered the, I only had, well, I think I only had something like 20, I had 55 in there and I think I've still got 10, but they're not mine because my partner has a shop as well. So I've actually managed to catch up 100%. I've gone into my bank accounts, uh, paid all my bills. <laughs> I've got... Uh, uh, my PayPal account empty now and after refunding all the people and um, I'm ready to start over and I reckon I'm the king of starting over. I, I used to be a Jehovah's Witness and I got kicked out of the religion when I was 23 which means I had to start over with no friends at all and I remember hitchhiking around New Zealand telling people I was a mobile internet consultant and charging them $300 to set up a website and $30 a month to keep it online. And it took me a few years, but I built up a business that um, used to turn over half a million dollars a year um, just from New Zealand's information network. It was really cool. And it was just because I had to start over. So I thought, what do I like doing? And then... Um, yeah, basically invested a little bit of money into um, building up a couple of apartments in town, sold those and went and lived in the country and worked off a satellite dish with my wife at the time. And uh, we had a purpose-built house in the country. And then the um, uh, wife wanted a divorce and 24 hours after that happened. 
Uh, I had these pains in my stomach, and I went to the doctor and said, look, uh, oh, my wife wants a divorce. And he said, oh, I thought you guys were the best thing since sliced bread. And I said, yeah, well, I did too. And I said, but I physically feel terrible. And he felt around my stomach, and he said, oh, you're all right. He said, gave me a couple of depositories and said, go home and, and take those. And I went, okay. And, um, yeah, and 24 hours later, I'm in an ambulance. Um, and I, what I had is a burst appendix. And then I got a bad infection. I spent two weeks in hospital literally fighting for my life. But yeah, what happens then is your priorities change. And it wasn't about my business. It was about the people that come to visit me. And it's such a privilege to have people in your life that really care about you. So after I got out of hospital, and this is when I was 40, I'm now 50, I was incredibly lonely. And I'd lost all our couple of friends as you do when you go through a divorce and and I had to start over so I got myself a, an apartment in Rangiura and it was 10 metres away from a railway line and I remember at 4 o'clock in the morning that um, you'd hear the trains going past and it was just a horrific sound and I thought oh my god I'm so lonely so then I remember somebody saying Look, just do what you like doing and find other people who like doing what you like doing and hang out with them. So I, I, there was a website on the internet for dating, and it was called Find Somebody. So I went on there and I tried chatting to women, and I tell you what, women are pretty picky when you're online, especially when they're judging you on a, a photo. They don't know anything about you. You kind of have to give people the hard sell. Anyway, so I, I got on there and dated a couple of women, didn't really work out, and then I noticed they have a, an event area so I put up there, mountain biking, McCain's Island, anyone would like to join me, come along. So six, uh, eventually six guys, we were going mountain bike every Saturday. And then I met this lady, and I said, look, um, why don't you come along and um, go walking Why we uh, go for a mountain bike and meet back afterwards for a cup of coffee? And she said, well, walking by myself. I said, yeah. I said, well, why don't you take my dog? And then I thought about it, and I thought I might change the event to a mountain biking and dog walking event. And then what did we have? We had 10 people turn up with their dogs. And they're all ladies. So the men, we went cycling, the ladies went walking with their dogs. And it was great. And then I said, well, what are you guys doing later on? And I said, what do you mean? I said, well, I, I don't mind hosting a, um, a potluck dinner if you like. So they said, okay. So they all come back to my place for a potluck dinner. And we sort of started a social club from that, and it was really awesome. And we built some amazing friendships. So my social club, I actually stopped it about two years ago because I, I did it for seven or eight years, and I was exhausted, really, organising people. Um, but we finished up doing dog walking events. Um, the best ones we did was really the hiking events. And I'm really proud to say that I managed to get about 500 people together and we would do 11 big walks each year. And then people would say, oh, oh, I don't know if I'm as fit as you guys. I can't come on those walks. So in between the big walks, every fortnight, we'd do a smaller walk. And we'd just literally get people out there getting fit. And um, it was great. And then some people, so we did dinners. Uh, we'd take, um, I think the most I ever had was about 50 people going out for dinner one night. Often I got stuck with the drink tab or some tab that somebody forgot to pay. Um, and it was really rewarding. And I thought to myself, when I was laying in hospital, and I think I counted about 10 people come up and visit me, I thought, I'm 40 years of age, and obviously I got kicked out of the religion, so I lost all my real earthy friends that I had at the start, and I had no one in my life, and I thought, I don't ever want to be like this again. So then I started, um, I, I started looking for other things to do rather than just a social club. So I, I tried to join the fire brigade, <laughs> went along for three months, and that was uh, not really my scene, and they didn't want me because they didn't think I'd stay there, and, and they were probably right at the time. Not that I liked rejection. Um, I got involved in my, my sport, which was target shooting, and that was a great community. There's about 1,400, I think there was 1,800 when I started. It's a dying sport, but there's about 1,400 target shooters uh, in New Zealand, and I got involved in that sport, and that's a great way to get to know all the locals. Uh, I joined Rotary, that was pretty cool. 
Uh, and then I also joined Toastmasters, and I finished up um, going to Boaters Toastmasters in Christchurch, and that was pretty cool as well. And then I finished up um, going to a lunchtime club and then a Tuesday club in the evening. So I went to a morning one, a lunchtime one, and um, yeah, an evening one. So what did I go to Toastmasters, and what is Toastmasters? It's basically a place that helps you do public speaking. And also you get to put together talks and you sort of get um, evaluations on how well you did. And you learn a lot of um, skills when public speaking, really. And it's brilliant. It's helped me a lot. And then I joined another organisation called National Speakers, um, which is an organisation that taught you how to groom yourself to be a paid speaker. Because I, I, wanted, I wanted to talk about um, being dyslexic um, to schools. Um, but I remember being at Rotary one night and I'm sitting there with a lady who runs Rangura High School and she, she asked me who I, what I did and I said, oh, I don't know how I got talking about it but I said to her I didn't really like the education uh, system. It never really helped me. I'm dyslexic and, and it never really did anything for me at the time. I said, I've got no time for education. <laughs> and then I said, uh, and what do you do? <laughs> she said, I, I'm the the principal of Rangira High School. <laughs> so I figured that I probably wouldn't be the right type of guy to do a talk about dyslexia to schools because the first thing I'd tell them is as soon as you thought you could leave school, do so, and education isn't the most important thing in the world. However, if you were doing an operation on me, boy, my job, you better be good at educated at doing that. Yeah, so that's sort of my story. So um, when Elite Six come along, somebody said, um, you're doing all these events, you were quite involved in the community, and I went along to BNI and Rangura, and that was the first time I did any business networking. And then a guy I met at the pub, because I used to go to, oh, what was it called, DJ, AJ's? DJ? Oh, I've got what was called a bar in Rangura. I used to look at all the people drinking and think, oh my goodness, hope I'm not like them. And I used to go to this bar all the time, and I remember meeting this guy, Barry. And Barry and Nicole it was, and he said, oh, look, um, they're starting up a new business networking group in Rangura. Would I like to come along? So I did. And I went along for about a year. It was good. And then the company, the person that owned the company behind it, uh, came up for sale. And um, so I, I bought the company. And then my job at the time was selling franchises because it was actually set up to be a franchise. And you could buy the North Island or the South Island. And um, you'd have the uh, privilege of starting your own Elite Six business networking group. And it was all set up kind of like a pyramid scheme at the time that um, if you facilitated a group, you'd get 10%. If you invested $2,000, you'd get 20%. If you invested $3,000, you get 30%. I think you get the idea. And the maximum you could invest was $5,000, and then you'd get 50% of the monthly fee. So it sounded really cool and all that, but then um, it was quite a hard thing to sell. And then I realised after I purchased the company, it had such a big history. And he, the guy that owned it um, wasn't really, shouldn't have been in the public uh, relations or the relationship uh, business because he had ticked off a lot of people. And so after I bought the company, I'm finding these people in the, um, well, I had a lot of documents and I'm ringing up these people going, oh, hi, um, you know, who are you? And what role did you play with Elite Six? And all sorts of terrible things. So I had a company that had a bad name. So I had to, to um, really sort of start from scratch. So eventually, long story short, we did have about 14 meetings going. We had 12 facilitators. They were all getting paid 10% each. Uh, they didn't really run the meetings the way I wanted because they didn't really have enough skin in the game. Um, I had uh, a master franchisor that was driving me crazy. Every time I wanted to implement something, we had to go and have a meeting about it, and I didn't have the freedom. So at the end of it, we banged heads. Um, it was Maria Gold, actually, and we banged heads. Um, she wanted At one stage, she wanted to me to pay her $200,000 so I could buy back the franchise that I gave her. And um, it was just ironic. And we spent eight hours in mediation trying to work it out, and at the end of it, I said, look... From now on, all my facilitators are getting 50% of the game. I'm doing away with the franchise. And by the way, you can start your own business networking uh, own business networking company and you can email my members and invite them to go with you or go with me. And that's what we did. 
And so that was quite cool. And then basically after that, I, I, um, I, my facilitators I did keep, um, they helped me and we, they helped me run my meetings and we did a pretty cool job. But eventually I said to each of them, oh, look, how about if I run your meetings for you? And then now I run, well, I did run all the meetings myself bar one. And I've got, still got a facilitator who used to be in one of my meetings who moved out to um, uh, Lincoln Way and she said, can she start her own meeting out there? And I said, that's fine and she does a fantastic job. So it's, it's funny how things evolve. And if I bought this company eight years ago thinking I was selling franchises, now I'm running meetings. So now I've got... Uh, we fluctuate a lot. The most we've ever had in Elite Six was 140. Last year we had 122, and I was quite proud of that. And right now we're just on 100. So, um, and also now we're asking people to go virtual. So I sent out um, an invitation to 100 people, and I got 35 people that could sign up and get uh, on um, Zoom. Now, ironically, the 35 people that will probably participate this week in Elite Six, Elite Six, not Six, um, I, when I bought the company, I had 36 people, and we built it up to 140, and now I'm going virtual, and I'm doing it different. Um, it's going to have, I'm going to start off probably again with about 35 people. But what I'm really proud about me is I embrace change. I actually love change. It terrifies me. But where a lot of us in business at the moment, especially in New Zealand, have to reinvent our businesses. And, um, and that's what we're doing tomorrow on our Zoom um, thing. We will be helping people to think different. Um, and on my advertising, if you've seen it, it's called Decision Makers. And because people that think different need to make lots of decisions. Entrepreneurial people that... Uh, uh, that um, have are successful or are not successful it's all about opportunities coming your way and the more opportunities that come your way and the more decisions you make the quicker uh, some of them get traction so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous because I'm really tired now and I probably do need to get a couple of hours sleep but I just wanted to share my story with you and also ask if you are uh, on the internet and you listen to this Search for Danny DeHeck, find out what I do and see what I'm passionate about. Um, or tune into Elite Six and see what we're doing, uh, virtually if you like, please. <laughs> and uh, that'd be great. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's an exciting time and it's a nerve-wracking time. And we've, this is the time when we all look after each other. I said to my mates, I said, we're all going to be in the same boats. This could be a sort of an equaliser for a lot of wealthy people who, I mean, if you're banking your money and you're thinking money's going to get you through this, uh, this is going to take, uh, the economy is going to get a hit. And I tell you what, I, I reckon week one, week two, week three, week four will be game changers. And if we don't beat this virus, then we will need to start thinking different. Um, but there's going to be lots of, opportunities as I said but there's going to be a, a communities built now when I traveled Bangladesh that was the poorest country I, I've traveled for a long time there's real communities in those countries and they look out for their their, their people um, and that's what we need to do in New Zealand and I love living in New Zealand I mean when I um, travel the world I've fortunate enough I've been to over 30 countries and my last trip my goal was to ride on the top of a train in Bangladesh and that wasn't a reality when I got there. It was quite hard. I travelled China. That's a monster of a city. It's a world oiled machine. And um, it's technology capital, man. It's just amazing. I really loved it. I only went there for three days and just hung around uh, Canton. Um, and then I went to Bangladesh. And, oh, my God, no, no infrastructure. Um, the buses that are overtaking on corners. But the people are lovely. And you couldn't walk down the street without being um, grabbed and pulled into a shop for a cup of tea, free cup of tea. And they want to know all about you. And the next thing, you meet their brother and their sister. And that, they've got nothing. And they've got happiness. And that's what I learned when I, was, when, I, when I got sick, that the most important thing is your health. So by our Prime Minister 
worrying about our health first. That is the most important thing. And if you've got some soups frozen in your fridge, look out for your neighbours. There's heaps of food to go around. Um, and I've just gone vegan, so it's going to be even harder to find food to eat. But um, this, this is the time we pull together as one country and we look after each other. And we make sure we have um, laughter and happiness in our life. And don't focus on the negative. Hang around positive people. Get on the internet. Um, find some, uh, some things um, to do. Uh, one thing I'm really proud that I've done recently is I've done a lot of building around my own personal brand. Um, I, uh, people think I was a nut, but I've got my, my Facebooks and my LinkedIns and my Instagrams and my TikToks and my, my, my Twitter account. And if I was given any advice to anyone, I, I'm quite happy to get on live, live um, Zoom room and teach people this stuff. Like LinkedIn, I did an experiment where I added 4,000 friends without even looking who they were. And out of that 4,000 friends, um, about two or 300 of them come back and had a, a kind of interaction, but, but I actually clicked add friends 7,000 times and 4,000 added me, but no one interacted with me. So I used to send them this inquiry saying, hi, I'm Danny, don't you remember me? We met in the first Mars colony. My parents used to own the Yardis Space Theatre and we used to play Earth movies on Saturday afternoon. It's so nice to be able to reconnect with you. And I sent that message off to about 4,000 people. And I'd got some funny conversations going. But my point was, a lot of people use social media and they don't really sit there and use it. It's a minority. So if you want to get the best out of social media, I probably wouldn't focus on LinkedIn too much, but try interacting with people. Try listening to what people are saying. Try not to plug your message. Try to draw them out. Now, I did a Dao Karniti, I can't even say it, course. I got gifted it by one of our members. It's a $3,000 course, and, and it taught... It, I always, always did it, but it always taught me if, you, if you're talking to somebody, people love it. And if you draw them out by asking meaningful questions and show sincere, genuine uh, interest in other people... You will, um, that person will go away saying, oh, they were really nice. I really enjoyed talking to those people, not really realising that they were doing all the talking, but you were drawing them out. Because people like talking. Um, so here's an opportunity to build some, do some personal development. Uh, I've got quite a few audio books I listen to. Um, one of them's Flip It, um, and you'll find it, it's a blue-covered book. Um, Cameron, I think it is, he's wrote it. And he's talking about every, everything that's negative, flip it around the other way. Um, eat that frog uh, is a really good one I'm just going to have a look at my iPad while I'm talking and talk about some of the books I recommend that you read um, let's see what we've got um, yeah Flip It by Michael um, Hempseed I think it is oh now Zig Ziglar now get his books man he's really cool um, he's got a screechy voice and if you listen to him in the car it'll probably drive you crazy um, but they're really good stuff, you know, because he's way back. But now he's got some really cool stuff. And the other one I really liked was Be More Pirate. Oh, that would be the book at the top of my list. And it talked about all these people who were disruptors in the industries, like Pirate Bay. And then uh, iTunes was modelled after them. And now look at iTunes. It was a massive. I think they said that they uh, were hoping to sell a million uh, have a million dollars worth sold in the first six months and they finished up doing six million in the first month or something like that. Yeah, but there's some of the books I've got. My, my reading list isn't really there. Oh, yes, it is. Here it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, um, but I have got quite a few. But maybe that can be a topic all in itself when we're talking. Um, I'm not a stranger. You just need to um, go to danny.co.nz, send me an email and um, install Zoom and I'm quite happy to have a chat. All right, so I've spent... 29 minutes telling you about me <laughs> and um, why I'm nervous about running my meeting tomorrow. Um, uh, tune in if you like, if, if I get this online in time. Um, but but definitely, definitely a game changer, uh, what's happening. And I think it, uh, there's opportunities out there. All of New Zealand is basically going to have a four-week holiday at home. And um, we can go for a bike ride, we can go for a run. 
Um, but if we want to beat this this virus, then we need to listen to the professionals, the ones that have been researching all this sort of stuff. And we get to be entertained with Netflix. It's not that bad. And uh, be safe, be true to others, and speak nicely, have empathy, and try to be a good person or work on your personal development. Um, and then we'll be able to tell our kids um, a bit of history. We haven't had an experience like World War I and World War II, have we? Or a depression. We've been pretty fortunate, really. So this is our opportunity to uh, maybe um, shine and be, be true to yourself. All right, and I'll leave you with one of my personal uh, quotes that is actually mine. Market what you do, not who you are. This is Danny DeHeck, and uh, I'm signing off. Thanks for listening.